What up, artists? My name is Dwayne Jones. I'm the creative director and founder of a lifestyle brand called Art Pays Me. This is the Art Pays Me podcast, and I'm passionate about finding ways that people like you and me can make a living for ourselves off of our creativity. And, you know, maybe we can make the world a better place at the same time. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, welcome to Art Pays Me. Today, I have a very uh, interesting person, Melissa Townsend. And I met Melissa first when we were on a, an alumni panel for NASCAD. It was for a portfolio day. And um, I really valued Melissa's insights. And she is a legit working artist. And I was like, wow, I'm jealous. I want to I wanna do that myself. So, Melissa, welcome. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, so what is what exactly do you do? So you're an artist, but like, what specifically is your your thing? What's my specific jam? Well, um, to dream. I love dreaming, and huh? love being childlike with it, and just uh, making art. That's how that's how it expresses itself best for me. Okay. All Paintings. right. <laughs> and you you have a lot of animals in your work. Is that like a you've you always been like an animal person? No. No, it's really funny actually. I've talked to people who who are like, "Oh, animals and they they have a lot to share about their animals and I'm like, "Oh, like I think animals are fantastic, but I just sort of started to create them and love them but I don't have like a past with them really I just enjoy them now I like I like the characters I like I like watching people connect to them to be honest and yeah it's not even about me it's mostly that I just get to see people be themselves and they show me their hearts and I love that (laughs) okay yeah right it's not it's kind of unexpected but I love to see I love to see how people can connect with the work, really, ultimately. Um, I have my own little ways that I connect in the same, in the same way, but of course, but um, yeah, it's, it's mostly that. Okay. Do you ever like when you're painting, do you ever assign a personality to something? Yeah, I, I think sometimes I get assigned where I have people come and they ask me if they'll make something that specific. And, and that's fun and I don't mind that at all. But other times I just, honestly, I let it just, I let it just be, it's, be what it is. Um, if, if I'm making something, um, whatever starts to show itself the most, like if it's happy or if I see joy or if it's a grumpy creature, I'm like, oh, you're going to be grumpy. And then we just go with that. But it's never like ill-intended or anything like, like that. It's just, it's all to be fun and, and a bit quirky. Okay. And um, one other thing is you seem like, I could be wrong. This could be the internet, but it seems like you produce a lot of work. Is that, is that true? I do produce a lot of work. Um, it's been amazing. I... Yeah, I don't know how to explain this. I just, I go into my studio and I just, I go for it. I have a little boy who keeps me busy. So I have to, I have to work hard when he's not with me, when he's at school or if my family's watching him or if he's doing something fun on his own, I can go into my studio and just like go for it. Now there's a downfall to that, but um, we can talk about that later. (laughs) Mm. So you have a more or less daily practice. I do. Yes, I have. Uh, yes, I'm always working and I'm always excited to work. Um, and it keeps me very busy. But there's some other things that I'd like to kind of pursue in the future. Oh, OK. With art. Yeah, Interesting. with art. Interesting. So I have like wait lists and people are, are, you know, I have shows. And so it keeps me very busy. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Are you? Do you ever um, uh, feel the need to like 
involve your son in the in the work or is that just like too much he's too like busy and and not (laughs) well I've had dreams of this um like not literal dreams but I've had like oh this would be beautiful I have a little boy I'm sure he would love to to paint and tell a story with me somehow in the work and um no he's very much outdoors driven he loves sports he loves activities so he's not he's not there. He, he'll color a little bit here and there, paint a little bit, but he, he's not focused on, he's doing his own thing. He's, you know, (laughs) yeah, I've tried, but it's not what he's, what he wants. So it's okay. And it's wonderful. I'm okay with that. I, I actually want to write a story book with him. Like a, we'll see maybe when he's a little bit older, he'll want to do a little story book with his mom. But at this point I'm all alone. (laughs) Uh How old is he now? He's seven. Oh wow, that's a that's a fun age. Yeah, he's seven. So I think, you know, there there was a couple of ways that I I might have missed opportunities to help him be a little bit more messy with his creativity, um, and I might have regrets around that. We were renovating and living in a house that I couldn't I couldn't be really super messy in it, and um, so he didn't maybe have the opportunity to. Yeah, I might have some regrets. So. In the summertime, um, I have a plan this summer that we're going to try again outside to be really messy, really creative, and see if it bites and see if it catches. Mm-hmm. He, he might want to make some things with me that way because he's so busy, and I, I just haven't found a way to connect to him with art that way. Do you, Am I making sense? You know, it absolutely makes sense. Um, I, I have two kids, uh, two daughters, okay. and okay. my oldest... Uh, and I just recently got a studio, so nice. I've been had that same dream of like wanting to have them in there working with me and stuff like that. Yeah. And but it's always been a mess for most of the time I had it, and this is the first time it's been clean enough that two people can actually sit in there. So wow! I um I invited her to just do her homework in there while I uh, did some some art and wow. It was great. I was like, you know what? And she loves to do art. So I was like, I have to make this a regular practice because she was excited that I invited her into that space that is that uh, space. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely have to do that. Um, yeah. Finding a way to connect to them. Totally. I've seen other artists do it and I'm so amazed and it's beautiful. And I love following artists that have their children involved. It's really beautiful. Um, yeah. So I'm not maybe going to give up and maybe I don't have to be so hard on myself in that way. But the way that he, that the kids in our lives want to, want to work, we need to, we need to to connect with that. And I think I just need to work harder at at that. Right. And, and, but that said, like my youngest is the opposite. She's like completely disinterested. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I can relate to the other side where she's just like, yeah, um, daddy, uh, I just, I don't want to. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Uh, yeah. So like, what were you, what were you like as a child? Well, honestly, this, I, it always comes back to this. I've shared this a lot. I just looked up at the sky a lot and the clouds and the trees and the nature. And I would just be like, I want to be an artist. I want to paint and draw and I want to just do that. (laughs) Yeah. I literally was there all the time as I grew older. It was the same story. And I'm, I'm seriously like that now people are talking to me and I listening, but then something might catch my eye that is very strange in around me. Like, I don't know, some, some sunbeam or something. And I'm like gone and I don't know where I went. (laughs) It's embarrassing. Eh, I can really. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> and uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in Lacombe, Alberta, which is a small little town. Um, and then we kind of, we, we moved when I was about 12 from that area. There wasn't any art of like teachers or any real art um uh, like mentoring for me there. And um I was young still, but my parents could tell that I was interested in in creativity. And we moved then, I think I was around 11, we moved to Kitimat, 
which is another small little community up in British Columbia, northern northern British Columbia, beautiful little town. Um, and we found a little, we we lived in a little cute house, but in down the street there was an art teacher who was retired, and she spent some time with me with watercolor. And so I would go to her house and she'd show me some watercolor tricks and uh, tips and she'd show me just how to mix my colors and um, basically she'd show me what she made and I was like so enamored and over the moon and just uh, started then in high school to get really involved with any art sort of focused projects that I could get involved with had a couple scholarships come out of high school and my teachers were very um, supportive and encouraging me to go to, uh, to university, Emily Carr, mostly because that's out in, in, um, in BC, in British Columbia. Yep. But I was young and I wasn't ready and I left home too soon and it just kind of caused some, um, what's it called when you try to move forward, but you're not moving forward. <laughs> it wasn't working for me. I needed a little more time at home, but um, that's a different story too. <laughs> yes. Yes. So at some point you ended up at NASCAD all the way on the East coast. So happy I did. Yes. Huh. Interesting. And yes. so your experience, what was what did you um, major in at NASCAD? So I majored in, in fine arts and minored in drawing. Um, I studied drawing as much as I could. Uh, I wanted to study painting, but I didn't have the means um, physically and, 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 and all the things that I needed to do painting. I, I lost my brother as soon as I moved out here. He died uh, three months after I was attending the school. So I just really, I had a sort of, I felt weak mm. and I couldn't do what I needed to do physically, emotionally to get through the painting program um, or to even dream about it. So that was pretty unfortunate, but I did all right with drawing. Like I, I love illustration and drawing and um, mark making. So it was good. But, you know, when you want to do something else, you always kind of wish that you would have focused. <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I agree. I get that. I get that. I'm yeah. sorry for your loss, actually. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, like, I am, I've found in my career it's been so circular. I leave one thing and then come mm. back to it and leave it and come back to it. And uh, I majored in communication design. I'm currently right. working in information management, but right. I I design T-shirts in, mm -hmm. in my business, and they're basically a, a form of communication design. <laughs> so, I know I love to do. <laughs> thanks. I love and, it. Uh, and and I've also just really re-embraced my fine art roots because that's what I I, I uh, minored in drawing, sort of when I was at NASA. Oh, you did too. Yeah, nice. I did a lot of drawing. So. Um, that's, that was my introduction to, to, uh, the industry. I, I, I really love to draw. It's just, it happened to be that one of my instructors said, you, your style looks like it would be suited to graphic design. So I ended up just following that basically. Not Isn't it funny? <laughs> yeah. So funny how we listen to influence, how influences come in. Yeah, I know. It's a good, yeah. that's a good message. Like. It's good. I understand. But when it's in your heart to draw. Yeah. It, yeah. Just, it just comes out. And sometimes I catch myself. Um, uh, I think I've been in the, in the business world maybe too long because I forget the importance of just mark making and just creating. And I'm like, I can't sell this. So why am I wasting my time uh, in this thing? And it's like, no. I really enjoy it though. So I should just do yeah. it because I enjoy it, right? Oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's like eating a piece of delicious cake. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Do you like, ever uh, find that with, with your process when, when you're creating or do you not even think about 
so your audience per se, you're just kind of like, I just want to make this. Okay. So I feel like there's a couple things to this. Um, yeah, I feel like, okay. So way back when I started painting and not actually knowing what I was doing because I never studied painting, I had a couple class classes. I took a couple classes. Um, one was an evening extended class at uh, NASCAD, which I loved. Can't remember my instructor's name right now. Uh, she was amazing, though. Um, anyway, I I was just exploring with the animals at that point and f- wanted to be part of the little show Prink sh- Pre-Shrunk at Argyle Fine Art. Yes, and I was very excited to just sort of be able to submit. And it was, there was an ease to the little pieces, like a joy that came with making these little pieces. You can, you can submit five for your first entry kind of thing. And so I was like, I'm definitely doing all five. And I couldn't wait. And um, I felt like really drawn to owls to start with owls. And so I, and that was, there was meaning behind that. It was because they, <laughs> To me, it's always about the background meaning. It's kind of annoying, um, but I always need to have like purpose and meaning. Um, mm-hmm. So it was like, oh, owls are so like ninja night creature. <laughs> they can see in the dark. Okay, that's good. And I just felt like, you know, Halifax needs some night ninjas. So here we go. And I happened to have five uncles. So I named all five pieces after my five uncles. Mm, cool. And uh, I called it the five uncles, but there was other um, meaning behind it that was really um, important for me. Uh, so, yeah, to answer your question right there, there are important things that are happening behind the scenes that I won't necessarily share that are really like kind of like my my pearl, like things are really important and special to me. And I won't usually share that with people, but I think people can feel it. Mm. And so often there is that connection, but then, oh crap, now I can't remember what you asked me. <laughs> oh, I was just like, in terms of, uh, you know, once you start to release things, you, you automatically amass an audience and then that audience has expectations of you and do you ever, yeah, like, yeah you're creating to appease that audience. Yeah. So I do do that. Okay. I do do that. I do. And I'm okay with that. Because I love the connection. Okay. I love watching people connect to things. And um, it's beautiful to me. But like I said, I always have purpose behind it, even if I don't share that. Mm-hmm. Which sounds kind of creepy maybe, but I'm not a creepy person. So mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's, it's not creepy. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> No, but you know what? I actually, it, it, I like that idea because uh, it's almost like your soul is, is being transported into the work and yeah. it just kind of comes out. Like I'm looking at this bear with a hat on it. And oh, yeah. Oh, let me tell you about that. <laughs> it feels like there's something to it. And, you know, I obviously can't tell what that is, but it makes me automatically put my own crap on it. I and, love it. Uh, it's like, ah, uh, something about it is sad. Um, yes. But it's very cute at the same time. Oh. <laughs> so true. So I can be really honest about that now. It's been okay. a few years. That piece in particular, well, I just wanted to do the bear because bears are, bears are strong and they kind of show up and you're they spook you and you know you ever run into a bear growing up in bc we would kind of have to be on the lookout when we went for hikes and bears were very stealthy um i mean maybe they're not but they were for me i was like oh my gosh the bear like (laughs) anyway Mm -hmm. um this bear this particular bear it to me is is sad because i i've had some close friends and this one particular year I found out that there was a birthday party and I'd always been invited to all the birthday parties and of this one particular friend and I would come and kind of help her set up and do all these things. Well, I got asked one day if, uh, 
I was going to a party and it was, it was the party. It was the party that I would always go to, to celebrate her birthday. And she like, I was not invited and I was so heartbroken. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was like kind of sad. Like you said, Dwayne, I was like, she was my friend. Like I love her and I'm not invited to her party this year. And it was like a big party. It was like, I think 40th or something. Cause we're getting old. Mm -hmm. But I just had to work through that. And I, and, and so I do that in my work. I'll work through how I feel about certain situations or if I need to do like a little forgiving, I will practice that while I'm working. And I'm like, nope, I forgive. This doesn't matter. It, I'm not rejected. Like, you know, like, yeah. it's, it's really brutal. But I love that you, that you could see the sadness in the bear because um, it was a really hard time. And yeah. Yeah, um, I hate to be. I, 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 I'm the same. I'm the same. Like, like I was saying before we got on. Like, I'm dealing with like a dark, like, part right now, and it's. Uh, I hate it, but at the, I love it at the same time because I get ideas for things when I'm right. in the space and. But so I, I tend to as well um, sort of channel that into a positive space, into like making something that will make me feel better maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, but no, the, 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 the deeper stories, they do all, always ultimately come through and it's, it's very interesting. I think that's why art's so Im important. Um, yeah. Yeah. So many reasons art's important. Yeah. So um, the other thing I was wondering, but you know what? Also, you mentioned like you don't have a problem with catering to a certain audience. And I know like as artists, we, you don't have this problem, but a lot of people are stubborn and feel like they don't want to cater to an audience or they don't. Yeah. Um, they just want to create what they want to create. Do you feel yeah. like being aware of your end cost because they are customers at the end of the day, um, being yes. aware of these people and, and what they might be wanting has helped you. Like, do you have regular collectors? I have some, yeah, I have some people that will, that will contact. Yes, I do. But I have, I, ha I will share that I, for a while, um, was doing some pet portraits for people. And, um, that's something that, you know, as an animal person that's doing animals, it comes up and I was really not enjoying the pet portraits, uh, at all. I didn't know the pets. I didn't know where they were coming from. I didn't know what their thing was. I didn't know them and I'm not a portrait artist. Hmm. So I found it very difficult to try to capture those. And so I stopped doing that. I said, I'm sorry, you know, I, I won't do these anymore. And I let, I let myself take the break because I didn't, First of all, I didn't need to do those. That's not, that wasn't the connection I was looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, the connection I was looking for was different. It was, it was still that I could connect to. So as long as I can connect, like there are pieces that I get requests for that I will not do because I can't, I can't find a connection for myself as well. So I hope I'm answering that question fully. It's sort of a progressive answer, I think. That's, that's very interesting. Um, mm -hmm. I never do something just for the client. Like I have to find, uh, I have to find a thing in it too for myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think why I don't feel so like a sellout or whatever people might want to like call that at all. I don't. Right. Right. Cause you're, you're picking and choosing based on like what it feels, whether, whether you have a connection to it or not. And if you don't have a connection, you don't need to do it. Um, yeah. It's, it's great to have that, um, to get to that point, to, like how did you find um, having a gallery representation sort of helps you garner an audience or did you find other ways to, to do that? So having the galleries represent me has been phenomenal. It's been absolutely wonderful part of my journey. Um, and also being a graduate of NASCAD was incredible, has been incredible. You know, people 
know the school and it's really reputable, reputable, uh, of course. Um, I think at the end of the day, that combination, um, just having peace about who you are and like knowing your identity and that's such, you know, that can be really a loose term, but really truly knowing what you're, what you're, what you're wanting to make and do and who you are, who you are can really play a part for it's played a part for me saying yes and no to people. Mm. Um, and, and you just have a, a, a trusting that it's going to be okay. Like if I say no to this job, I've said no to jobs that I've felt uncomfortable with, for example. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, actually like that is not comfortable for me. Yeah. And and I, and I have to be okay with it. And if they want to talk, if, if it's upsetting to the other person or, or, you know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not my, that's not my problem. And it's not, I don't mean that in a rude way. It's, it's just literally not my problem. Like, thank you. I'm so honored that you would actually reach out to me, but it's just not my, I'm not interested. It's not my focus. It doesn't feel right. I don't have peace about the project. So I had to work those things out and trust me, like there's been trials and errors and I've learned often the hard way, but it only takes once the hard way. And then you're like, Oh no, I have that feeling again. Mm. And I'm not going to do that project. Yeah. 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 I'm still learning that one. <laughs> oh yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I think a lot of people call it the gut. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I listen to it and then I ignore it. And then every time I ignore it, I regret it. Cause I, oh, I, I get that like guilty feeling of like, I don't want people to be like, oh, I'm trying to diss them by like not wanting to work with them or, you know, that kind of yeah. thing. But sometimes you're right. It's just not going to fulfill me. So I just, I shouldn't do it. Like red flags are going off left and right. And it's just, don't do it. The red flags. <laughs> you got to watch out for the red flags. <laughs> And it doesn't always mean like there, it, it can be amazing, amazing opportunities, you know, yeah. but you have to listen to that very strong sort of foundational thing inside of you. And so I've learned to follow that. Right. Do you find that um, you constantly need to keep looking for uh, new people to buy your art since like, I think about wall space in a home, for instance, eventually people run out or people <laughs> in the, like, do they just rotate pieces? And you know, how, how does that tend to work? Don't people just move into bigger houses, Dwayne? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I rotate my art. I, uh, I have walls now where I just dedicate. I think it's like, I can see a little cartoon. It's like, no, it'll fit right there. Just, just stick it in there. It'll fit. <laughs> yeah. I we, don't know how to do that. <laughs> we can't decide. Like, we barely have any art up in the house. And uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> just, we just can't okay. use. <laughs> I totally understand that. Yes, I know. Because it is. It's a commitment. But you can, re you can rotate your art or um, just squish it on every ounce of your your life that you can. Like I have a friend and her, her mother and her grandmother are both art collectors and they're adorable. They, they showed me recently, um, I had a little house visit and it was so great. It was like, I don't know, maybe two hours. And we just went into every single room, the bathroom, the bedrooms, the hallways, they had art like, like lined up the walls and back down the walls. And I was like, you are amazing. Wow. You love art. Huh. Art lovers are amazing. Yes, they are. They are. They blow my mind. It's so beautiful. They're so, there's something so beautiful about them. They're, they're just like, they're so, I just, I, I don't know how to say it. I can't find the language, but they're, they make me cry kind of. I'm like, you guys are just the sweetest. Like, well, we, we will fit this. We will fit this on the wall. Mm -hmm. No, it, it is amazing. Like the first time you meet someone who, you know, I'm used to like fellow artists sort of respecting what you do, but like when a complete stranger who has oh. does not make art or anything like that, and they just like get it, they get what you're trying oh. to do and they want it for their house. It's like, whoa. I know. Listen, my first show, I have to share this. My first show, it was down at Argyle and it was um, maybe 12 pieces or something. I can't 
quite remember. And I was standing in there and this gentleman, there's a crowd, a small crowd and they'd gathered. It was a Saturday afternoon and uh, raining. I think it was raining. And this gentleman comes in the room um, from off the street and he's like, hello, did you make that painting in the window? And uh, there was a, there was an owl in the window and he's like, I, I don't know anything about art and I don't, I don't buy art, but I, I was just driving by and I saw that in the window and I was wondering if you could tell me about it. And I was like, wow, like, wow, huh. in the moment. Okay. And I'm like, you're so adorable and how incredible you would stop. And he waited to talk to me a few minutes. So we're talking and I, I'm like, do you want to, do you want to know what that painting means? And he's like, I do. And I'm like, well, the name of this painting is Franklin. I, I believe it was Franklin. And I said, it means a very good man. And the guy starts to cry. Uh-huh. And he's just like, I have to buy it. And I'm going to buy it. And he's crying. <laughs> this guy just shows up off the street. Crazy. Out of his car. I know. But that's, <laughs> but that's how it is. Like, that's what it does. And I love it. And I've experienced that with music. And I've experienced that with, like, friendship and I've experienced that with strangers and it's beautiful, those moments. Mm. And I live for those, actually. Those are like basically, that's that connection again that I think that I sort of chase. Right. It just what kind of keeps you going. Like, yeah. like, absolutely. That's why I'm like, animals? You want an animal or do you like, do you like trees? Like, what do you want to connect to? And then I'll find a way to connect to it. And then like, let's, let's let that like adventure begin. That's uh, that's so great because, you know, I left, I somewhat, I didn't know, I never really left the industry, but, you know, I got my job in information management and was at the time I was pursuing this career, I was like fed up with the creative industry. Uh, yeah. But that whole, um, that concept of remembering what it feels like to, to make that connection, I think it's what brought me back. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So, um, so glad. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad too. And, and, you know, I hope, I hope, uh, I think like doing this podcast is a way for me to kind of nudge, mm. nudge some of those people who are teetering, uh, yeah. shit, you know, just, just here are some examples of people who have, are doing this and, and, uh, hear their story and you could do it too type thing, you know? Oh, come on. That's right. That's right. That's the whole message. I love it. We all have a story to tell and a message to share. And yeah. Yeah. So um, in terms of the uh, business side of it, do you have a method for pricing your work or is that uh, something that is instinctual or some, do you, if do you feel comfortable talking about it? If you don't, that's fine. Oh yeah. No, I work with the galleries actually on pricing and we balance out that way. I, the odd time I um work on it alone but um no I I like to stay consistent and that way um everyone's in the loop on the pricing okay so do galleries say we know our collectors particular um they tend to feel comfortable paying this is that is that sort of how it works no it's uh that is a you know, in the beginning, I think I was already sort of selling some pieces, like very small scale. Okay. And I, we just had little meetings, the galleries and I, and we would kind of discuss what we thought and what they thought, and we would work it out that way. Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't think I'm uncomfortable talking about this, but and still when I start to talk about it, I'm like, am I uncomfortable right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a it's a strange topic because um it's good to know. It's good to know. Like you should like if someone's listening and they're trying to figure out pricing, it like they should reach out to like an artist or ask, you know, the questions. It's a good idea to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh you know, because too it was you have to know um, if if the goal is to make a living off of this. You sort you you have to price in a way that makes sense that that yes. um, you you can put food on the table and, and oh, things like that. so I I do find that a lot of us are in the we want to make things that are accessible or we yeah. other or we feel really bad about pricing things at at what we feel it should be priced at and yeah. 
we price it at, you know, a price that equals the same amount as the materials we produced it on. And, oh, and, that's always and, fun. <laughs> yeah. And then you can't make profit and then you can't continue to make more. So I try to remind people like we're in the goal, we're in this to, to um, sustain ourselves and to be able to, you, you can't make more art if you can't afford to, to buy the materials. No. <laughs> so, uh, so true. It's so true. Yeah. So if there's um, any piece of advice you would give, uh, and I hate the term aspiring artist. I think like you either are or you're not, but okay. say aspiring artist. For yes. I would say, I would say the, those dreams and those dreams in your heart, you can't ignore them. So if you fall down or if someone says, you suck or if if you feel the negativity around you like you're not going to be anything you're going to suck at art then your best bet is to totally ignore that and go after your get skilled in whatever way you can you know either go on youtube or whatever people are doing now right youtube Mm -hmm. and uh go on just go on go to school go um, start like meeting with other artists or, or other writers or, or, you know, like go after, go after it, be true to what you have inside of you. That's what I, that's what I would say. And don't give up like on the hard days, you can't give up, you know, and I would say also like take a job, like on the side for a while, for sure, but always pursue, um, always pursue and, and build up your character because character is needed. Mm. to make the wise decisions. <laughs> okay, great advice. You have any um big things you want to promote that are coming up? Oh, I so wish I did. Um just in this moment I'm like, don't I have anything to promote? No, I don't. I just want people to go after their their uh dreams really and to do well cuz we need you to shine and rise. <laughs> All right. Where can people find you online if they want to look at your work? Online, I'm melissatownsendart.com and um, Instagram, melissatownsendart. Those are my most used places of um, social media. Um, you know what? I do have one thing I want to say about yeah. back to the comment or the question. Um, is I heard this story once uh, and it it's very short. It's a... Uh, was listening to this girl tell a story about how she was hearing in her mind all the time, like in her thought life, she was hearing, um, you're going to, I think I'll just use the example as a plumber. Um, you're going to be a terrible plumber. You're never going to know what to do. You're no one's going to hire you, blah, blah, blah. She, uh, she shared, like, if you're getting thoughts like that, um, it, it's a total indicator that you're on the, like, you definitely should be a plumber kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're getting beat up in your mind or like anything like that and you're like hearing like nobody will like your work, don't you ever do that? That sucks. You're ugly, blah, blah, blah. You're a terrible artist. Um, definitely pursue art and you have to like let the, you have to stop those thoughts. So um, that would be the other side of you need to exercise y- your mind like in the way that you, you literally don't let those thoughts come. So that's what I want to say about that. Wow. I never thought about that, but I, I actually really like that too. Because, you know, the, the imposter syndrome is so real with us. Yes. You know, always feeling like you'll never be good enough. You'll never be good enough. People won't like it. People won't blah, blah, blah. And yeah. You just got to push through it. You do. And if you're hearing those thoughts, that it's like, oh, it's a pretty strong indication that you're on the right track. Yeah, it's like you need that. You you, you almost need that negative pushback in yourself because it's it's weird though. It's weird that, yeah. how that works. I know. It's irritating. <laughs> it shouldn't. Yeah, you know, like it shouldn't. Like I'm uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be okay. <laughs> okay. Going to be okay. Yes. Yeah, like, I have full I have multiple art degrees and I still sit here like 
I love it. Uh, I shouldn't do this. Oh, no. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, I know. I know. Who cares? Who cares, right? I do little, yeah. Who cares? <laughs> I used to do little, like, flower garden drawings and, like, enter them in little competitions. And, like, they were so cheesy. But I, and I never won. I mean, I won a couple. But it was, like, I would try and try and try because I wanted to win these little, like, cash rewards. And uh, once I took fourth and I was like, oh, nuts. Like, but you just, like, you just can't give up. Yeah. Yeah. And now you got, you're winning because you're actually just doing it. So that is the, the real prize, I think. It is so fun. Yeah. So Melissa, thank you for doing Art Pays Me. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you so much. It was an honor. Thank you so much for listening to the Art Pays Me podcast. Thank you to Lenji Beats for the theme music. If you got anything out of this show, please rate, review, and subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. The more you do this, the more reach the podcast gets, and the more artists I can help learn to make a living at what they love. If you want to know more about what I do, hit me up at artpaysme.com or at artpaysme on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest. See y'all next time.